This is a story of how two Vietnam veterans would create what would be called the most dangerous publishing company in the world. In 1963, Robert Brown opened a publishing company called Panther Publications. The first book published by the company was 150 Questions for a Gorilla, originally written by Fidel Castro's mentor, General Alberto Bayou, a communist war veteran that trained Castro on the tactics that made the revolution in Cuba successful. Panther Publications would publish various military manuals. The publications received minor criticisms because they published material that was never made widely available for just anyone to purchase. Panther Publications was frequently being confused as being related to the Black Panther Party, and they would undergo a name change. The new name, the Paladin Press. In 1972, Paladin Press would be in the sights of the Australian military and intelligence agencies for publications of classified military documents titled Infantry Training, Patrolling and Tracking, and Ambush and Counter Ambush. The FBI would question Paladin Press, but after sufficient information was given about how the documents were obtained, explaining he buys various materials from bookstores, gun shops, and infantry training and patrolling and tracking were purchased from Shotgun News in 1968, but they didn't recall where they purchased Ambush and Counter Ambush. It appears ultimately there was no wrongdoing found. Lund and Brown were having creative differences over where to take the publication. Peter Lund wanted to branch out and publish other topics along with the subjects they'd been publishing the years prior, while Brown wanted to move towards a magazine-type publication. They couldn't come to terms and Lund would buy out Brown and become the sole owner of the Paladin Press. In 1975, Brown would start the controversy-embroiled Soldier of Fortune magazine. I was a co-owner of Paladin Press, and I sold my interest out to Peter Lund. Uh, and I had a few bucks, and so I decided, well, time to go to Africa. It was an offshoot of a publishing company I started way back in 1963 uh, when I published a book called 150 Questions for a Gorilla, uh, which was written by a Spanish loyalist who trained Fidel Castro before he went and invaded Cuba in 1956. And so that from that, I grew a little publishing company, and when I came back from Vietnam, I got together with Peter Lund, uh, he had money, I had none. We put the company together with his input of cash, and that started Paladin Press. That happened in 1970, then I sold my interest out in 1974. Lund ultimately would follow his idea and branch out on topics. These topics would earn Paladin Press the title of the most dangerous publisher in the world. Lund being a free speech absolutist, he decided he would push free speech to its absolute limits in what they would publish. This decision would ultimately cost him millions. Paladin Press began publishing books on DIY submachine guns, how to destroy bridges, Middle Eastern terrorist bomb designs, arson, identification forgery, and much more. Not all publications were aimed at illegal activities, and they still regularly published books on self-defense, history, lockpicking, financial freedom, weapons, weapons guides, and military guides. In 1982, Minnesota Senator Rudy Borschwitz would call the FBI to investigate the Paladin Press saying that the publishings could be used to commit terrorist attacks. The FBI would investigate. Everything was protected speech. But in 1993, a book published in 1983 would cause a major stir. American musician, record producer, and recording engineer from Motown Records, Lawrence Horn, would hire James Perry to murder his ex-wife and disabled son in their home. On March 3, 1993, at 2 a.m., Perry would enter the home and execute Horn's ex-wife and their son's nurse with multiple shots in the head, and Horn's eight-year-old disabled son would be smothered to death. These murders were staged to look like a robbery gone wrong. James Perry would be given the death sentence after being convicted in 1995, and Lawrence Horn would be convicted on three counts of first-degree murder and one count of conspiracy to commit murder in 1996, receiving a life sentence. A lawsuit was filed against Pallet and Press, alleging that Perry used the books Hitman, a technical manual for independent contractors, and how to make a disposable silencer to plan the executions. The lawsuit alleges that Perry followed nearly every step from the books, from using an AR-7 rifle, filed serial number, attached a silencer, rummaged through the house to make it appear like a robbery, and removed the spent shell casings from the scene, and he would flee in a stolen car. Perry would dismantle the firearm, filed down the various components, and dump them all as the book instructed. In September of 1996, the district court judge, Alexander Williams, dismissed the case against Lund in the Paladin Press. 
while saying the book was loathsome and reprehensible, but it was protected speech. The family would appeal this decision in the appellate court, and the appellate court found that Judge Alexander Williams misapplied the standard of unlawful incitement. The court decided that Paladin Press intended the book to be sold specifically to murderers. This would be enough to establish that Paladin Press aided and embedded Perry, and this time it would need to be decided by a jury. Paladin Press would ultimately lose the lawsuit and had to pay out several million dollars and destroy the remaining 700 copies of the Hitman book. April 19, 1995 was the second anniversary of the government siege on Waco. In response to this, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols would detonate a truck bomb outside of the Alfred P. Murrow Federal Building in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The bombing in Oklahoma City was an attack on innocent children and defenseless citizens. It was an act of cowardice and it was evil. The United States will not tolerate it, and I will not allow the people of this country to be intimidated by evil cowards. I have met with our team, which we assembled to deal with this bombing, and I have determined to take the following steps to assure the strongest response to this situation. First, I have deployed a crisis management team under the leadership of the FBI, working with the Department of Justice the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, military and local authorities. We are sending the world's finest investigators to solve these murders. Second, I have declared an emergency in Oklahoma City. And at my direction, James Lee Witt, the director of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, is now on his way there to make sure we do everything we can to help the people of Oklahoma deal with the tragedy. As a result of this bombing, California Senator Dianne Feinstein would add an amendment to the Terrorism Prevention Act, allowing the prosecution of publishers that publish instructional manuals on bomb making and explosives. Tim McVeigh allegedly had publications from Paladin Press. In 1997, Paladin Press would be in the crosshairs of the British government, alleging a video made by Paladin Press showing how to make silencers for various caliber weapons was found in possession of a suspect in a Maryside police investigation for a murder in Liverpool, England. Warning. Under U.S. law, it is illegal to make any device to suppress or reduce the noise level of a firearm or to attach anything to the barrel of a weapon with the intent of reducing the sound of discharge. This is a major felony, punishable by many years in prison. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the ATF, actively investigates and prosecutes those suspected of federal firearms violations. In order to avoid violation of U.S. law, portions of this video were filmed outside of U.S. territorial jurisdiction. The information in this video is presented for its informational, academic, and entertainment value. Do not attempt to make any of the devices shown in this video, or you will be in violation of federal law. On June 3rd, 2017, Peter Lund would pass away. The official Paladin Press statement on his death says the following. Peter Lund, the founder and publisher of Paladin Press, died suddenly on June 3rd while on vacation in Finland. Peter was always a doer, and we at Paladin take comfort in the fact that he died doing what he loved most. Paladin Press, which he co-founded in 1970, um, with Robert K. Brown, was called the Professional Action Library for a reason. And he made sure that all Paladin books and videos met the standards of professionals and action adventure enthusiasts. Uh, he firmly believed that the First Amendment guaranteed Americans the right to read about whatever subjects they desired. And he pushed all the limits he could in both his professional and personal life to protect this most fundamental right. Peter fought in the Vietnam War with the United States Army Rangers and Special Forces. And he was especially proud that uh, Paladin was one of the first publishers in the country to offer books about the Vietnam War. He remained fiercely supportive of all the men and women in uniform who served their country. On his passing, one of Peter's long-term friends described him as a good friend, a great warrior, an intellectual, a gentleman, and a most accomplished businessman. We think that pretty much sums up his life. He will be missed. Six months after the passing of Peter Lund, Paladin Press would close their doors for good, issuing their final statement. At the end of the year, Paladin Press will be going out of business. There will be no more books or videos sold after November 29th, 2017. We are incredibly grateful to all of our amazing customers and authors for their continued loyalty and support over the decades.